Welcome back. You're still watching Morning Live. Now, religion, body politics, racism, gender, sexuality, rape culture, and toxic masculinity are some of the issues highlighted in a new production titled Salid. It is originally conceived and choreographed by Stena Bank Young Artist of the Year for Dance 2021, Christy D. Grisi, and directed by Machamila Mutlung. It in the production, Andisa Kebashe showcases her sign language performance performance skills, making uh, this production accessible to a variety of patrons, including people with hearing disabilities. Well, Mutlung and Gabashe join us now in studio to tell us more about the production. It is on at the Market Theatre until the 11th of December. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to Morning Live. Good morning. Good morning. Machabala, let's stop with you. Uh, what is this production about? What is the inspiration behind it? Uh, GBV. Mm -hmm. Like, there's, there's no other way to put it, GBV. Uh, we read many years ago uh, Pumla Gola's uh, rape culture. Yeah. And that kind of gave birth to the idea uh, of Salit in 2017. And since 2017, we've worked on different variations and versions of the play. Uh, the play questions society's role mm. in GVV and sexual violence generally, because I think in many ways when we talk about gbv we talk about the victim we talk yeah. about she got bitten up she got battered but we never really think about perpetrators we never really think about society we never really think about religion and churches and politics and how they contribute to it i think one of the biggest cases that we had in this country was a woman got raped a man became a president mm. you know and we sang for the man we prayed for the man mm. we exiled the woman and then nothing happened yeah and we then don't really deal about the problem because the problem exists. The problem exists beyond Zapiro's shower, beyond Oscar Pistorias, beyond society really has a problem. So, so with this production, we kind of attempted to begin to create a conversation that involves men mm -hmm. and that asks men, what are you responsible for? I want to bring you, Andy, so into this conversation. Talk to us about your role and how you were roped in into uh, making this conversation accessible to people with disabilities. Ah, uh, well, he believed in my crazy yeah. dreams. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even entail? <laughs> you know, of because uh, South African Sign Language is my home language, mm. and it theatre has always, if there will be accessibility, it will take an interpreter mm. but this play the sign language is incorporated in the play it's right. not being interpreted mm. it is done in south african sign language mm -hmm. which is something that has never happened in any south african theater mm. so his uh because we have so many issues as well uh within the deaf community where there's so many people who get affected by gbv and commit gbv but there's no accessibility there are no conversations that are open in South African Sign Language. Mm. And also to include hearing people as well and not see it as, a, oh, the signing people there. Mm. And then, so it is part of the play. It's not a, an othering, mm. yes. Why was it important, Machamila, that you include that in the production and make it part of the uh, conversation and not something on the side? To kill lip service. Mm. Um, uh, I think there's a lot of speak from government, especially around sign language. Uh, during COVID, we worked on another project and I then discovered that GBV is rife within uh, the deaf community. Mm. And I mean, the two pro projects that we ended up with were GBV related. And I'm like, so if this conversation is as universal as it should be in the country, when are we bringing this community into the conversation? Mm -hmm. so, so for me, the madness really, uh, when I pitched it to Christy at the time was, look, we can ignore two million people or we can begin to bring them into a conversation, especially at a time where uh, South African Sign Language is being recognized as an official language. There's dictionaries being written about it. But the reality of it is that uh, it's lip service, man. It's, mm. it's just like the period we are in now. We have 16 days to highlight the thing that's going to happen in the 17th day, mm. you know, uh, but no real tangible solutions. So if we are really involving sign language uh, as a language, then can we use it as a language of performance? Mm. And, and thank God for madness sometimes, because yeah. then you go where other people are thinking, ah, how, how are you going to get there? Yeah. And you just do it. And when you read the script and you 
you know, familiarized yourself with the concept, what is the first thought to say, okay, how do I then interpret this or incorporate this? Ooh, it was very hard because I've survived GBV. Mm. So it was triggering, but the more we go through it, it's very healing. Um, so you go through so many emotions that because you have to embody and show this person who goes through so much. Uh, so it, it is a, it's an interesting space because I've never performed in sign language mm. um, as my home language. <laughs> it has always been a language that I can just work as in from this language into another, yeah. but to not perform mm. in the, the language, especially at a theater. Mm. Yes. What's been the response to the production and I want to talk specifically because you've had to it's had to evolve it's had to because I remember I don't think Andisa was there when we spoke in March no and no you yeah. were in Cape Town I think at that time yeah um and you've had to evolve a little bit is the response different now given the fact that you now you're at the market theater and now you've had to evolve a little, little bit I mean the general messaging is the same mm. you know but the there's been <laughs> varied response uh, and it's worrying sometimes because when you speak to South African women after the show they say thank you for uh, bringing this into into a space like this when you speak to South African men they say why do you hire a white woman so uh, <laughs> and it speaks to it speaks to the culture of violence I think I think the the different thing about this version is that people are talking more mm -hmm. and people are beginning to understand it more uh, what needs to be done people are fascinated to see and this why in it uh, because it's something new mm -hmm. but also it's something completely evolved you know and yeah so there's been positivity there's been ignorance but there's conversation i think when we set out for this version which is like the ninth version of the production uh when we set out for this version it was if we can get people talking we don't really care if they liked it or they didn't like it because but quite frankly you can't do a play about gbv and it's friday night entertainment mm. right it's not uh but there's a conversation and that's that's the positive thing that's the positive thing that there's a conversation and and is very good people must come see come see her he's she's she's very good i like i when we were, when we were talking about it we started talking about it in april mm. and i said look i think you can do this i think it's an important conversation just don't be like the interpreter for Peggy Gale or Mandela's <laughs> funeral. And so, so, you know, just don't be there. <laughs> I'm interested in the conversations that the deaf community are having yes. about this. Have you had people, you know, deaf people come and see the production and what's been their response to it? Yes. And what is the conversation in the deaf community? Yes, B because as, as hearing people with hearing privilege, mm. Deaf people have never accessed theatre. Yeah. Because it's not accessible. Mm. So this is the first time where they can fully come and see a play done in sign language, mm -hmm. which has never been done before. Like, like oh, he was saying that we always tick a box. As long as we have a little corner there. Mm. <laughs> Are you... <laughs> On you green screen, on screen, <laughs> we're okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and we just tick, 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 mm. and we don't check quality, we don't check anything. So this is purely done to say we are doing justice, mm. and we don't care what whether it's going to make you feel uncomfortable or not. But we are saying, as somebody like my father, for the first time, is going to experience theatre. Who is deaf? All right. Thank you very much, Machamalam Long and Diswa. Thank you so much for talking to us. Uh, the production is running uh, at the Market Theatre, and uh, it is called Salid. Is originally Salid, rather, is originally conceived and choreographed by Christy Lee Greasy, Standard Bank Young Artist, and uh, you know, so pointing out to some of the pertinent issues like <laughs> our sign language there on the corner of the screen. That's Jonathan Geber there. This time, in fact, it is uh, you know, this production is part of the sign language is part of the production. All right, let's say good morning to our poet.